I don't know what the fuck is going on. What's up, everybody? It's me, Erica. I ended that Real Housewives of Atlanta review so abruptly because I'm like, I'm tired of it. I I should have, I should have been. I should have been back on on the on the internet reading the tweets. That's what I should have done. Because the tweets are more interesting. How did Jeray get these texts from Drew but ain't no Bob had a love child on her, right? Kenya really just went all the way there with Ralph. She confronted him in a soft but firm manner and when he tried to push back, she let him know she was ready to battle too. Kenya really stood in and stood up for Drew in that moment. Kenya is a real friend to Drew. Kenya read Ralph. I'm always up there. I'm always supporting them. I don't know if that always reads on camera. And that, and that, I think that's... A you can't say you're supporting her when she tells you that someone is calling her a bitch and she has a problem with it and you're like, everyone calls you a bitch, so get over yourself. Or that's making not, I can Tina jokes. Yeah, I mean, that's not well, support. What a woman wants to hear, a wife wants to hear is, I'm sorry that those you know, people are making you feel that way. What can I do? I told you. I honestly... I honestly, you see how Kenya corrected herself? Like, like as if he would treat a woman differently than he would treat his wife. Those are the same people. A wife, a woman, a girlfriend, a fiance. It's all the same person, bitch. You're, you're, you changing your labels or getting another stripe means absolutely nothing. And these niggas show you over and over again. It means absolutely nothing. You have to stop that. I noticed when she corrected herself. I was like, okay, Kenya. Listen, watch. I think what a woman or a wife wants. She tells you that someone is calling her a bitch and she has a problem with it. And you're like, everyone calls you a bitch. So get over yourself. Or making I can Tina jokes. Yeah, I mean, that's not well, support. Uh, what a woman wants to hear, a wife wants to hear is, I'm sorry that those, you know, people are making you feel that way. What can I do? I told you very long time. I mean, I'm always, up there. I'm always. Up. Kenya standing up for Drew redeemed this season. That's sisterhood. That's friendship. Listen, it doesn't even have to be sisterhood. It doesn't even have to be friendship. I feel like if you see somebody mistreating somebody, Call them the fuck out safely because you know how these niggas are. They'll beat you up when you hold them accountable. They don't want it. They don't want to be held accountable for nothing or, or held responsible. That's standing up for your friend against an abusive man. That's Kenya Moore. We know and love who said from season six punks and bitches attack women. Kenya ate his bucket head, <laughs> bucket head ass. Drew's sister looked like she would mop the floor with Courtney. She does. She looked like she would whoop her. Whoop. She looked like she has enough animosity in her to beat her ass. Like, cause bitch, where did you come from? How did you get on this show? Drew, are you not letting your sister Allison know that you knew who Courtney was? You met Courtney before. I mean, what the fuck did, where did she come from to the point where she's like a friend of, and she has promo. She did a photo shoot. Right, you done, you didn't signed a contract and some documents. Not this woman like the cookie lady. Oh, she just came on for a, a, a scene and we never seen her again. But here you are with this person you calling her cousin Courtney. I don't know. I don't know. I don't like it. I don't care how how soft Ralph speaks. I'm not buying anything he's selling. Ralph has been gaslighting and mistreating Drew since day one, and we've seen it. Yes, Drew is a mess, but Ralph is a narcissist, right? You trick me. You cannot trick me. You cannot trick me. You cannot trick you me. Cannot, you cannot trick me. Um, Ralph humiliated Drew, gave her ops ammunition against her, discredited her ambition, showed up to the reunion to embarrass her further, and now Drew sings a love song dedicated it to him as a setter, as a serenade. I'm going to be ill. Shout out to T with Dre. Cause like what are you doing performing here and like gesturing to him and stuff like that? Girl, go the fuck away. I just girl, stop. <laughs> that shit was so dumb. <laughs> I can't stand Ralph's elongated, elongated head ass. <laughs> Girl, 
Sonya was encouraging Drew in the makeup room and Kenya was defending Drew out in the reunion. That was nice to see. They've been the only two trying to help Drew out during this season's show, so shout out to them. This is where Sonya goes wrong. She's the only one in the group that more or less gets along with everyone. She could be easily the mediator, but she's constantly relegates herself to be a, spokes, a spokeswoman or a follower. All you have is a Birkin and some memories, bitch. I'm sorry, Drew ate her right the fuck up. But she was like, get you a husband. That's how I remember her telling her, get you a husband. Girl, look at your husband. How the fuck do you have a husband like that? And you're throwing a husband in somebody's face. Like, girl, y'all be fucking crazy, delusional. I feel like y'all need psychi- like psychological and a psychiatrist. The amount of delusion that goes into this idea that these human beings, because they have this title, are supposed to act a different way once they have this title, and they wasn't shit before they had the title. And now all of a sudden, it's a husband. Uh, you have to treat a wife a certain way. You, you correct yourself from woman to wife, as if they treat y'all any differently. All y'all motherfuckers was wives up there, treated like shit. Treat it like shit. Don't tell me that. Oh, and then you will still throw it in somebody's face. You will still throw it in somebody's face like it's some honorable title to have. Girl. Don't nobody care about you being married to a man and having a husband. Nobody cares but you. And the fact that you could be like and get you a husband. Girl, shut up. Look at your husband. Look at your husband, Drew. You side with her enemies. Courtney has all the ammunition against her, and she got that from you. Once again, again, Kenya is one of the few girls on here who always shows up for her friends. Kenya is the only one that calls niggas out. And then when the niggas run, when when they yell back at her and talk to her crazy, all y'all take the nigga side. Martel, that crazy ass cockeyed nigga that was in Miami that was running up on her, throwing up gang signs and shit. When y'all got to the reunion, y'all said that, oh, well, he wasn't really that bad. He wasn't girl. What? He wasn't really that bad. Sheree did that. A candy was the one who stuck up for Kenya in that moment. No man should be walking up in an aggressive manner to a woman throwing up gang signs. That nigga was crazy and was proven that he was crazy as hell. Girl. Crazy as hell. Sheree, you're a substitute housewife. Shut up. Air, Sheree is really arrogant for no reason. This is what Scotty by Nature says with broke ass. Right. But her her idea, she's another fucking narcissist. You getting, getting over on people, not paying people. It makes me sick to my stomach to hear that people still do business with that buffoon. Sheree is a fucking clown. And she got the nose to go along with it now. Girl. Why is your nose red on the tip, Rudolph? Girl. Here's this. Here's this. It just seemed like it was escalate. No, no, I'm saying what happened? That wasn't the case. It was several things. That was that nigga that was walking up on Kenya and little bitch saying little bitch walking up on her on everything on everything, girl. And then y'all set up at the reunion. Kenya is the only one that be stepping in. She got in Martell's ass. You shouldn't even be dating no rusty ass, musty ass, disgusting ass, po ass nigga like that. Can't even pass an open book test. You a flop and he's a flop. Dumbass nigga can't even pass an open book test. Kenya be the only one telling these niggas about themselves. Kenya has always been consistent on defending women from these ancient niggas, regardless if they are on her, on the best terms or not. Kenya is a girl's girl. Right. With your gay lesbian affair, like it's some kind of slur. Y'all be acting like being gay, like something's wrong with being gay. Like, girl, okay, if she's fucking with Ty, she's cheating on her husband. It don't matter if it's a man or a woman. He's cheating on her. It doesn't matter if it's a man or a woman. It doesn't matter. Oh my God, he likes dick. Girl, you like dick too. Y'all be acting stupid and dumb and delusional over dick. So why don't you think these niggas like dick too? 
Girl, what the fuck? I'm so annoyed. Courtney has a strong attraction to Ralph. It's quite obvious. It's giving kissing cousins. They're not cousins. They're spending way too much time on this, in my opinion, and it's uncomfortable, and I want Drew to win and move forward with her life. Shout out to Kenya for being the only one to stand up for Drew. So adopting JoJo was hasty decision when Ralph has been in his life since he was five. Plus he wrote a book. That's so gross. He's playing on that boy's emotions. That was T with Dre. Can you be the only one telling these niggas about themselves? And she does. But then at the same time, when she was married, she was acting like it was some honorable thing. Like y'all really think it's honorable to be attached legally to a man? What's honorable about that? What's so great about that? What is so great? Please tell me. Besides the fucking tax break. Girl, go marry your home girl and get the same fucking tax break. Okay? God damn it. Sheree and Marlo whispering and chuckling while Drew listing off prime examples of how nasty they truly are and thrive in someone else's demise. Right. The Peach Report says, the truth of the matter is we've all seen Ralph disrespect and embarrass Drew from the time they joined the show three years ago. So regardless of what we're of what we are now hearing about her viewers haven't forgotten about what Ralph did on the show for all to see not saying Drew is perfect, but let's not excuse manipulative and toxic behavior. It's clear tonight that production is propelling the three stooges, Sheree, Marlo and Sanya as the new dream team of Atlanta is pathetic and stupid and short-sighted production has showed themselves to be clowns as well this season. Kenya, Kenya tweeted, Ralph, you will not disrespect nor gaslight me. Yeah, once you've been a re- in a relationship with a narcissist, no matter what the relationship is. For me, when I say relationship, y'all know I'm not talking about intimate relationships. I know y'all have your goddamn minds focused on intimate relationships for the majority of your goddamn life. But I'm talking about all relationships. If you've been in a relationship with a narcissist, you are, once you're out of that relationship with them, Anybody else, you calling them out. I'm calling you out. Nigga, shut your ass up. See, but y'all be respecting to have respect for these niggas. I don't, I don't have respect for them. I can't even speak to them respectfully. Okay? Nigga, shut up. Shut up, Ralph. Nobody believes you. Shut up. He doesn't deserve respect. Sheree has really convinced herself that she is the best looking woman on the cast. That she's the only good woman, good looking woman on the cast and that she revives the show when she comes back. But this, this was the worst season. I gave this season a C minus. You had 16 episodes, 18 episodes altogether. Y'all don't even have 20 episodes. Y'all had seasons where you would have almost 30 episodes. Y'all don't have shit to talk about because the group is whack. The group is whack. And that's the truth. Let's see what else. Andy came out of his dressing room and he was like, what's going on? Talk about somebody said Ralph looks scared. No, he didn't. He looked like, like no emotion. He don't have no emotions. Narcissists don't have emotions. I feel uncomfortable watching Drew being forced to talk to Ralph. This isn't even entertaining. That's what I said last night. I was like, this shit is not entertaining to me. I'm looking at this like, girl, this is a fucking mess. Take this shit somewhere else off the TV. Go back into private citizenship and handle the shit with your husband and your mistresses and his mistresses and be done. Sheree always falls flat. It's quite embarrassing to see. It is. She's whack. She's been whack. The calm tone Ralph is using is making me want to smash my screen because that's what narcissists do. They be so calm while gaslighting you. You'll end up feeling and sounding crazy. This segment is triggering the hell out of me. Fuck Ralph. They, right. They made, they made Sheree move over for Ralph. Ralph should have been in a chair behind Drew or behind 
I don't know, in a chair off to the side, offset, talking offset. She threw him a peach at one point. And then this idea, do y'all think that y'all get back together? Don't ask me no dumb shit like that, Andy. That's what I would have said. Please don't ask me no dumb shit like that. That's dumb. And then Kenya coaching Drew. Drew, you're going to have to talk. Girl, it's a mess. Ralph's behaviors are definitely just like Mark. His agenda in the marriage wasn't the same. But as far as how they treated the wives is for sure the same. Kenya just left that ass hanging and Drew fought for her marriage longer. Somebody said Atlanta's top freak trying to expose Drew over a kiss like she don't have bitches reenacting Cirque du Soleil in her bedroom is yeah. It's interesting that Ralph looks at Courtney the same way he looks at Drew slightly disgusted and completely uninterested and zoned out. Whatever she is to him, it's not the role she thinks she has. Listen, 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 listen to me. Listen to me. Girl, these, these, y'all give, y'all be, I think y'all love to say that a man doesn't like a woman. Y'all love to say he don't like you. Like when Mark and and Kenya were going through it, he don't like you. Your husband doesn't even like you. Your husband doesn't even like you. Girl, from what I see on TikTok, it's a lot of husbands that don't like their wives a lot. And they get in relationships with you because they know you're going to oblige with being a maid, a mattress, a mule, and a mule. That's why they could, they, they know you're dumb enough to, I'm going to take on the role as a wife. Please put the chip in my back so that I can start doing laundry and making meals and working 45 to 50 hours a week and throwing dicks. I'm throwing a dick. I'm throwing a dick. I'm throwing a dick. I'm throwing a dick. Thank you, baby. <laughs> Shout out to Pinky Doll. <laughs> what should be like? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how y'all be. Y'all really be like that. Waiting, like moving like this. Slap the wedding dress on me. Now I'm a wife. Thank you. <laughs> I'm throwing dicks. <laughs> y'all be so fucking happy these niggas don't like any of y'all newsflash (laughs) that's the gag they don't like none of y'all you you just there to be a fucking servant working for room and board he pays all the bills what are you he you working for room and board folding clothes and cooking washing the niggas dirty drawers room for room and board honey doing your doing your duties so he can pay all the bills girl you get an allowance too. Y'all think that's cute? Y'all think it's cute to depend on another human being for your survival? Girl, absolutely not. I would never. The way that the way that Drew said, she would never. She would don't you ever. Don't you ever, ever, girl. What are you gonna do? That's what Marla was like, girl, stop. What are you gonna do? Not a fucking thing. Not a fucking thing. Y'all love to say that a man don't like a woman. Y'all love to say he don't like her. She's not what it thinks. A lot of y'all don't. It's, it's not what you think it is. A lot of us have been in situations where it's not what you think it is, right? Because you know what you did? You know what you did? You created an idea and it's not the reality. So you have an idealized version of this person. And the reality is they ain't shit and they don't fuck with you like that. That's the gag. You think Drew likes, Drew likes, um, you think Ralph likes Drew? You think Mark likes Kenya? He don't even like you. Your husband doesn't like you. Does your husband like you? Girl, ask him. See what he says. You don't need to start saying, uh, 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 sounding like Sheree. Why are you performing to Ralph? Exactly. That shit was stupid. Right. So Ralph is not only cheating, but antagonizes her by bringing his side bitch to the show as his cousin. Like, that's the part that really has me, like, get them off the show. Because the fact that she was able to come in, sign a contract... 
you have promo shots, and then y'all turn around. No, she should, and they turn around. And this is more, possibly a the woman that Ralph is cheating with. That's nasty. It's really nasty, and I don't like it. And I don't like it. Some people don't like me, honey. People be trying to put me. I don't know. They said that the the lady who got hit with the brick, they said that she's a scammer. And she does that to get um, GoFundMes. To say that somebody harmed her. And then she creates a GoFundMe. So there's several different stories. Listen, at the end of the day, you know what the pulse is. The men said they would not protect anybody. You know what that is. It's time to get steer away from that. It's really time to let that go. And like Jasmine Garden said, that is the generational curse that you have. You have, you have this cord. You have this idea that because we live in a patriarchal system, that this man is supposed to be your protector. When in a system of patriarchy, the man is the oppressor of the woman. So he's not going to fight for you. He's not going to go to war for you. He's not going to go to battle for you. There are so many women who are like, oh, you, I don't, you know, um, you don't have any men around you who will protect you and this and that. No, you don't. And you looking to a man to protect you when you have the means to protect yourself is wild as hell, right? You, you should have, you should arm yourself because the men are just as scared of the men as you are and that's what what's her name was talking about hold on let me show let me let you listen to it i'm gonna keep it black and i'm gonna keep it brief here she go here she's a left hey y'all what's up it's friday so i'm gonna keep it black but I'm going to keep it brief. Now, today, I was going to talk about Bill Mayer's irresponsible comments on Joe Rogan's podcast, the Nazis continuing to wreak havoc on college students, and the death of Yashua Robinson in the face of a society that thinks we're past racism. But black men? Quite a number of y'all don't make no sense. I woke up this morning to discover that over this week of work and travel, I missed the fact that one of y'all hit a black woman upside her head with a brick because she wouldn't give you her phone number. Well, at least five to six of y'all stood there and watched. <laughs> My chest! And of Stephen having a productive conversation, allowing the man who hit her and the man who stood by and watched be held accountable, y'all ran over the river and through the woods to find any reason to say that she got what was coming to her. And you were wrong about it. Grasping at straws of stage consensual content. They don't know what consensual is. They also don't know what it looks like. Also tried to pull up old scammer pages that weren't even hers. And then you use this misinformation to substantiate warning to the rest of us independent black women who don't need no man that this is what we should expect should we ourselves decide to go around acting all feminist. It's ridiculous. And you are proving our point. So much conversation stirred amongst black men about why it is unsafe and unrealistic for them to intervene in situations like these. But somehow, y'all ain't even catch on to the fact that the same reason y'all scared of y'all is the same reason we scared of y'all. The same reason you choose not to involve yourselves is the same reason we choose to remove ourselves. But see, we're not allowed to do that because that's not justifiable to you because then you feel abandoned. And that's so interesting to me because not all of y'all, but it's a lot. And how many times am I going to have to say that? When are y'all going to start doing the healing and accountability work in the barbershops because we sick of it? But y'all be so quick to look down on black women for engaging in black feminist critiques of black movements for freedom that have required us to move at the expense of ourselves. Y'all be so quick to disregard and denounce black queer issues because you don't feel they are a necessary inclusion within the black problem. Y'all and a whole hell of a lot of black women swooped up by the patriarchy would be damned if you gave any credence to black trans issues because you think those specific groups of people have non-specific problems within the black community. But y'all want us to focus on you. Everybody else singling out themselves is a problem, but black men been trying to make black movements about their singular selves and their singular problems since emancipation. So again, you feel abandoned because we've become invested in the aspect of all of us getting free before making sure you got free first? It's sick. Do y'all really want liberation or not? And no, in this abandonment, you reflexively power. champion the abandonment of other groups of people by justifying the violence against them, by committing violence against them, and just letting it happen. But then I guess we can't expect you to intervene when a stranger hits a woman because y'all don't even say nothing when your own friends hit women. Oh, hit a nerve! Louder for the people in the back! Talking about we haven't earned protection. Neither have you. We gotta give y'all fake numbers. Tell y'all we married. Traveling packs. And buying to the everybody needs a gun rhetoric. Talking about <clears> if you guys stepping in for somebody you don't know, who's gonna protect your wife and kids? We would. Today's episode was going to be an overview of all the hurt and trauma and isolated incidents in black communities in the face of unfounded colorblindness and inaction of our government on both sides of the aisle. 
when Democrats and Republicans alike are trivializing the aspect of woke culture, blasphemously quoting Dr. King's words, implicating them at a time when we no longer have community or community members <coughs> that were standing in a gap for one another because everybody's so worried about their own shit. Black women and queer folk are the grass and the roots. We've been standing in a gap for community in spite of and because of rape, murder, and abuse, and all the racialized ways in which we can grow up too fast while still marching beside the people who have done it to us. Contrary to the outward appearance of our ability to endure and sustain, black women are not made of steel. We would love to be soft, but we don't have that luxury either, which is exactly why this particular conversation isn't a protect all women conversation. Because all women be gas about us too. Me and my friend just walked into a nail salon in Hollywood looking for refuge from an uncomfortable Uber and the Asian, German, Lily White, and other racially ambiguous women looked at us like we were stupid. So black men, how we gotta be on our own when y'all not? How we gotta be on our own and on your side at the same time? Make it make sense. The math not mathing. Hey y'all, what's up? It's Friday. So I'm how are we going to be on our own and at your side at the same time, girl, by take your asses. Oh, her, her green Adidas are really cute. Those are real cute. I want some of those. Those are really cute. Girl, she she said everything that needs to say. I don't know if the girl's pages are fake but from the brick girl, but if she lied, then, I mean, she didn't really use any city's resources, but everybody that, that, that um, gave to her GoFundMe need to give it back, give it back. I believe everybody until they proven, proven wrong. A woman, I give a woman a benefit of the doubt. She might be scamming. I, I did see another page that was, um, she was the beneficiary for it. I don't know if that was her or just some woman with the same name. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's not a common name. Rhoda, I think that's her name was, or Rada. I don't know. Maybe Rada. Um, if she's Somali, then y'all be xenophobic. It's so weird. Black people to be xenophobic. Girl, how are you xenophobic? How the fuck are you xenophobic? That shit is crazy to me. Especially black folks, melanated people. How the fuck are you xenophobic? Girl. And then and then y'all really, really, truly, black women be truly upholding the patriarchy. They really be like with they backs, the mules, they be like this, holding the patriarchy on their back. Oh, I love her 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 shirt, her blouse. It's so pretty. It's like sparkly pink with sparkles. I love it. The kids are running, honey. The kids are running. Okay, I'm about to go. I'm a little aggravated today, if you can't tell already. All right, so let's see, read some of the comments. Don't say all black men. Girl, let me tell you something. You, not all of us, niggas, get on my fucking nerves. Because you niggas are the most silent niggas I've ever seen in my fucking life. Y'all don't say a goddamn word about nothing. So it is all of you. It's all of you. Until you not all, not all of us, until until the not all of you speak up, it's all of you. Because we can't tell and we can't hear you. Don't say all black men wasn't that a white man that hit her. That wasn't a person of color. You want men to put their lives on the line for something that she started by putting her hands on someone else. I guess you didn't see that part of the video. It was two different situations. There's a video. I don't know if she's doing a skit where she's slapping people. I don't know if she's giving them something in exchange for the slap. But I've seen videos of her walking around. She's like an antagonizing energy. She does have an antagonizing energy when you look at those videos <clears throat> of her walking up to people slapping them. I've seen two videos of her walking up to people slapping them. The fact that she's Somalian, like, that shit is crazy to me. Who gives a fuck? That's a woman. You know what I'm saying? But I give the woman the benefit of the doubt until she's proven wrong. So, that's it. Um, you want to generalize all black. That's so wrong. You should have said something just about those group of men. L listen, nigga. That's how we talk about... we When it's the majority... You can only speak in generalities. You, it's not enough of you to not make it general. It's not enough of you to call out the exceptions. And at the end of that, by the end of this paragraph that you wrote, talking about it's not all black men, you are going to show us, in fact, 
that it is all of you because you are going to prove and affirm all the theories these people think about the ones that you're trying to separate yourself from. You are one of them. You single out individuals in that video. They were there and the person that hit up with the brick was not a person of color, but black women want unconditional love from black men when love from black women come with conditions. And you're right. There's no community. There's no more villages. This generation has taken it all away. No, they not. This generation hasn't done nothing that the previous and the previous and the previous generations haven't done. Shut that shit up. Don't act like what's happening is something new. It's just more people have more awareness because of social media and the internet but has nothing changed about what's going on today versus what's going on you know why it hasn't changed because you niggas don't think nothing is wrong with the way you show up in society that's why nothing has changed y'all think y'all are the best the absolute best you y'all think y'all are and people still cross the street when they see you so your social image is shot the fucking hell but you don't think anything's wrong with it. That's why it hasn't changed. Black women have changed.